I'll three one two four. That has changed over the years. And this end down here is where the fluid goes in and out. And there's actually a, uh, a valve in there. So when the tank is almost empty, that valve closes. And it keeps the air bladder from expanding out all the way because that could rupture the bladder. So a lot of things have to work here. And you can replace the bladders. You can unthread this and pull the whole bladder out of this end of the tank. But you have to detach it from this end of the tank in order to get it out. So this part right here is actually part of the bladder. It's just sticking through this housing. So bladder on the inside with nitrogen gas and oil around it. And the bladder gets compressed by the oil. And then when you turn something on that needs a little hydraulic fluid, that bladder expands back out and pushes oil out. So it's a 10 gallon tank, but you can only get two gallons of oil off of it depending on the pressure difference. So we'll put about 2,000 PSI of pressure into it and it will work down to about 1,300 PSI. So we get, you know, about 700 PSI delta, but we get at least two gallons of oil. Well, it comes with like an inch and a half thread on there, but we're gonna reduce this way down to something more appropriate for us. That's just a protective cap. Schrader valve there, it's just like your bicycle. This is the adapter for the Schrader valve to the rest of the fill kit. See, it's got a pin in there that's gonna push that Schrader valve, and the gas is gonna come around that hex bolt and up into the, the gauge set. The end of this fits into the hex bolt in there. You can depress the Schrader valve with the knob back here. You hear anything? No. So that yeah, should have the depressed. Schrader valve open. So yeah. if we open the valve, then we should get gas back out of the tank. Well, there's no trouble. gas in the tank then. That's not a terribly good sign. I'd like to be some gas in there. But if that's the case, then we should be able to press that Schrader down by hand. Oh yeah, see I can de depress it easily. Oh, okay. So we've got no pressure in the bladder. Okay. Which is not the way they're delivered, so it must have bled out over the years. I bought this as a bargain on eBay. Oh really? Yeah, years ago. Hopefully it's just leaked out slowly over the years because these things do have to be maintained. That's why I purchased the kit to refill and charge them again. And you can use air. You don't have to use nitrogen, but nitrogen's of course better because it doesn't deteriorate the rubber uh, bladder that's inside there. Because this is so fragile, we're going to remove this and put the cap screw back on, which protects all that stuff. So our nitrogen bottle here is not just for charging up the accumulator, it's for testing the lines too. So we plumbed it into the high pressure side of our system, and it's just a matter of closing the ball valve, so we'll test the front and then the back. And Andrew has added a gauge over here so we can see what we're going up to. And close it up. You shut it off? Yep. All right, we're leaking somewhere, I can hear it. No, that's tight. That's this. That doesn't seem right. <laughs> Making more noise as we close it off. Oh, see that was loose as a goose. And then this is the regulator portion of it. Oh, it's getting quieter. It's good. So with the pressure regulator, and what I'm doing is I'm loosening the nut on the top of the spring. And that lets the pressure push the ball off the joint. Bleeds the pressure down. Pretty cold on the side. Well, so far we got one leak, but it's in a nice spot. I mean, it's easy to reach. It's not one of these. These would be a bad one. Uh, Andrew had a great idea. We took the handle off and tightened the nut that's down here against the base. That seems to have done the trick. Much easier than replacing the whole stinking valve. No leaks. <laughs> that's fantastic. Because that would not be a fun place to change one. No. On the what? The end cap? Yeah, we don't care about end caps. Yeah, end caps are okay to leak. So we're over 2,000 psi still. There's one right there. There you go. That sounds like it's leaking somewhere. Hang on, that can't be plugged up. Man, I hope it's not this one. I think it is though. Okay, so to get to the leaky fitting, we went and cut a hole in the boat. That's actually the cedar from down below and there were two unions in here so we removed those, drilled and tapped holes, fashioned a hatch plate that'll go on top of there. This was actually plan A. We banded plan A for B because B was easier. So now we're back to plan A. I like this better. Is it leaking? Nope. Oh, wonderful. Fantastic. Nice oh. job. 
one small leak right here, like I sent this yesterday. Yeah. And then I realized I didn't mess on top of the deck yesterday. Oh, I did that. Oh, you did That's just okay. one fitting up there. That's no big deal. But this one has a leak? No, just this. I just tightened this pipe and it went away. Oh, perfect. Yeah. It angled that a little bit. But yeah, that, but that looks fine. Yeah. Yeah. Excellent. Well, Andrew and I have finished finding and fixing all the leaks. Actually, Andrew did most of that. Thank you very much, sir. Of course. So our nitrogen bottle there now it gets to charge the bladder inside the accumulator. And there's a chart you can use to look up how much volume you're gonna get out of this tank. We're gonna get about two gallons because we're gonna charge it up to about 2,000 PSI and let it come all the way down to 1,350 and then it's gonna close the poppet valve. So that range of pressures gives us about two gallons. You have a higher range of pressures, you get more fluid, but then you get too low on the pressure and things don't start working very well. So we're gonna try it off like that to start with and then we can change it if need be. And it is one serious ass tank. I mean, this one weighs a lot more than that one. And my accumulator here is a Parker. They're made by Hydac and probably other uh, companies as well. And this indicates that it's a bladder type. There are three types and we have this one here. This is a diaphragm and this is a piston. See that thing just moves up, it compresses the gas when the uh, hydraulic fluid comes in. The cool thing about this is you can use a full stroke because you can connect this over to a gas cylinder like that. And what it would do is it would use the oil coming in to press this gas over into another tank. In fact, probably a whole rack of them. The downside to this one is it's subject to contamination. A little dirt comes in with the oil and it gets in here and it's just like a, you know, it's like sand inside your car or your piston. That doesn't handle it well. These two types take uh, contaminants better, but this thing's eventually going to break. You can imagine if you had a gas cylinder out here and you're pressing this out into a cylinder, when it breaks, oil is going to go into that cylinder too, and so you're going to have, you know, that's going to be a mess. So standalone ones are often bladders because they handle the contaminations better. This one's a diaphragm, so it's just got this rubber diaphragm that goes across and it goes up and down. Smaller ones will often have diaphragms. Mine has a bag, and this is nice because this is easy to change, well, somewhat, because you can take the bottom out, you can take this nut off here, you can pull the whole bag out, put a new bag in. So they got to be checked every once in a while to make sure that you haven't ruptured your bag. If you find your pumps are cycling a lot more, it's probably because you've lost your charge or your bag has ruptured. And magic is down here in the bottom. So when this bag pushes the oil out, it eventually starts bumping into this poppet valve and shoves it down and seals it off. And that's why this thing's so big, that big poppet valve comes down on there. It has a stem that extends in the middle. Oh, fuck. We'll take our fitting off here so you can see inside there. Okay. Oh, that didn't look good. There's supposed to be a poppet valve stem coming through there. I may not even have a bladder in this thing. Well, yeah, we do. We got a bladder in this thing. It's just got an air chuck at the other end. I can see all the way to the other end and I can see the valve stem down there. Really? There's no bladder in this thing. Let me take this all apart and we'll just make sure. Okay, that came off easy enough. Don't need no stinking spanner wrench. So we remove the purge nut. The spanner wrench would normally take this thing off. Pipe wrench works, just like most things. Now don't change the order of any of these seals and pay attention to them. Now there's an O-ring down in there, supposedly, but this thing goes in. Yep. Should have a seal around it somehow. Yeah, it's got a big seal on it. You'll see this when I get it out of there. If I can get ever get it out of there. Right, so I got the seal off. And it should, oh my God, how's it on there? It's got a metal ring. Oh, it's split. So I have one that folds in half. So you just pull and pinch it together. And out it comes, see that? Wow. That's nice. You know, everything's, so it can just barely fit through. And then it's got an O-ring and a retainer. So putting it back together, it looks like that. And so this piece can't come out because this seals around that. But you can get this out because you can fold it in half. Clever design. Yeah. I'll have to buy a bladder. So then it's like, what is our Schrader valve attached to? That was weird that we even have that. From what I've seen is most time that top part is part of the bladder. Now, could we use this with just gas in there? Yeah, but that would absorb pretty quick. So it wouldn't last long. Oh! That's weird. 
Is this a bladderless tank? The hell did I buy? No, off. they cut the bladder off. Jeez. <laughs> and it looked like it was a new bladder though. It's weird. So, order a bladder. Okay, there's our model number. Uh, it's worse than I thought because I don't just need the bladder, I need the uh, poppet valve that goes in the bottom too. Our parts have arrived from Parker, including a bladder and a poppet valve. This is the uh, part that was in there. It is a poppet valve, just missing the poppet. There's the poppet valve with the poppet. So as the bag expands, see what it does? It comes down here and it shuts off the whole tank so the bag can't actually extrude down through here and tear itself apart because that's what it would do. Uh, nothing too fancy about that, but you would not believe the cost of that. I still came out a little ahead of, you know, buying it this way in parts and putting it together than I did uh, buying a new one, but hydraulics ain't cheap. Oh, you came with a fancy fancy how-to instruction manual, so it's all yours. All right. piece of wire can we attach that to it see they hang, they make a little tool that threads on there Let me get focus. See, they make a little tool that threads on there and then you pull the you know put it on a wire through here and then pull it through or a rod can we what thread is that maybe we just make that so like that, a rod uh, that that's just like oh we, we have this one has to go through the hole so it has to be small enough um we can use a like a valve stem cap like that Throw it on there, just have something behind it. Well, we just jig weld a rod onto that. Sure. You can weld. Yeah. Yeah, make a tool. much we're going to what 1300 whatever it says how long this takes but apparently it's not quick as I turn it off so drop into zero this bothers me that it drops off to zero yeah, yeah. Yeah, that would be right. now it shouldn't have anything coming in oh hey you got some? it didn't go all the way down that time it's okay it's just okay. gonna take forever okay. yeah so what we learned that they don't tell you in the videos about how to fill these things is it takes a while because it's just this tiny little hose and we're not even using a regulator we just open this valve and it's balancing these two tanks but only now after like five minutes of filling can I turn this one off and that needle finally doesn't drop back to zero and I suppose that makes sense because it's a little tiny Schrader valve that holds back all that pressure so by being so small it's very strong because it doesn't have a lot of surface area for the pressure to push on. So you just gotta wait for it to get past the little booger. Uh, 400 then. Oh, well that's good, we're making progress. Well the cylinder's balanced out, but we're still gonna need another one, so we're off to get another one. But we got some wasp. And they were all cool about it until we started moving the crane, so they die. Starter fluid. was the pressure on the cylinder? It was just under 1300 so I bumped it back up to 14 and called it good. That's fantastic. Yeah. Yeah. Well done. Okay that's it. The accumulator is in. I'm happy about that. More hydraulics coming. Hey guys Regina here. Did you see that live video Doug put up? What is this? 
Miss Oklahoma is coming to the VIP launch party, and she's going to christen the boat? Oh, what do you mean? I'm Miss S.V. Seeger. That's the boat I got down in the bilge. Mm-hmm. Yep, all the boys like me best. And look, I got a tiara, and I got a sash. So I don't really understand. I don't know. Maybe we should just have a contest or something. Yeah, yeah. Because I can hold my own against her. Yeah, uh-huh. I'm not, I'm not really sure what my talent is yet, but I still, I still got a little bit of time to figure that out. Anyway, you want to come see me take on Miss Oklahoma? Then, well, you better get your tickets. Go to the seachestfoundation.org forward slash Katusa and get your tickets to the VIP gala launch party of SV Seeker on August 21st at the Port of Katusa. Here I am, Miss SV Seeker. Here I am, your favorite rat. <laughs>